Hey, what's up, guys? It's Mark with Limo Marketer, and I'm joined today by Armando from SUV Seattle Service. SUV Seattle Services. Thanks for doing this, Armando. No, thank you for you know invite me to you know one of this interview. Yeah, totally, man. It's great to have you. And so, Armando and I were talking about two weeks ago, and it had been a few weeks, I think, since I spoke with him, and. What he was telling me was like, there was so much gold, so many things he's learned. He's a newer operator, which is kind of funny because I've told him I'm trying to, you know, uh, do more interviews with more established operators because we do help small operators and we help large operators. However, everything he was telling me, I thought would be so beneficial for all of you to hear, for all of you that are starting limo businesses. And so I thought we'd start uh, with your story, Armando. And so how did you even get in? to the limo industry? What were you doing before you started? So, you know, more of those other drivers or, you know, pretty, pretty much first time operators on, on the limousine industry, we start yes. doing Uber, right? Or ride totally. share or leave or something like that. So two years and a half ago, I started to, you know, think about start doing ride share Uber or leave or, you know, just kind of- Yeah, what were you doing up until that point? Were you just well, working a job or- I want to be honest, I was doing as a bartender. Oh, one nice. Of okay. One of the best restaurants on, on Seattle. So yeah, pretty much again, Mark, uh, I just have six years of United States and I tried to connect with the whole system as, you know, as a new American, whatever. So I'm pretty proud of what I built and I have a beautiful family here in Seattle. Nice. Family. I have my kids and everything. So yes. Definitely okay. starting doing my own business is help my entire family. Of and course. so with the Uber thing, did you just start doing that on the side as you were still a bartender or did you just switch over and start doing that full time or? I, I, I really switch and doing, I'm doing that part on full time as a full time driver. Okay, cool. Did you start with like regular Uber or did you go to Uber XL or Uber Black or, well, or what was Well, um, that's a good question. I just bought a regular uh, Highlander. So we, I, I was doing just X, uh, XL and I okay. was watching two, you know, handsome persons with two black cars and whatever. And I say, hey, you know, I have to, to see, you know, what these guys are doing, how the business goes, because I, I was, I want to grow in, you know, I want to grow yeah. in my income. I want to grow in as, as a human. And I was watching these guys with, the, you know, to suburbans or Escalade and everything. So I definitely try, I did Uber, regular Uber, like for six months, you know, dur during two, six months, I was saving money and, you know, try to, to get my loan to, you know, I buy my first vehicle sure. and I did buy, and I did buy my first vehicle, which is Lincoln Navigator SUV. Oh, nice. Okay. So th that's how I started with, with the Lincoln Navigator. Okay. And that was, you were doing still Uber Black with that Lincoln Navigator? Yes. I mean, I was doing Uber Black for, let's say, one year, which a problem. I was very happy. My income doubled, let's say, or probably triple, what was, wow. which I was doing with, uh, you know, regular XL or whatever. So when I was doing Uber Black, I started to have more private clients, you know, because they like my services, they like how I dress, they, they like uh, the brand new car and everything. So I get more confident about getting through the limousine industry oh. on that point, right? So I bought the car, I'm starting to have two clients or accounts who give me a lot of more hours every month. I mean. I, I got clients and clients and clients, and I decide, well, Uber right now is 50 or 60% of my income right now in the first year. And I say, I, I, I was doing the thing right. Yeah, right? yeah, totally. So on that point, pretty much, I started to connect with another chauffeurs, right? Because they was, you know, looking at me, do, seeing what I was doing or whatever. And one of those connections bring me to one of the main companies on, on Seattle. Okay. When I, uh, and I met the, the owner for this company and he was, you know, he checked my car. He pretty much opened the, the door and say, Armando, and uh, you know, I like your car. I like everything, but you have to change this or change that. If you want to work with me as an affiliator. And he put a lot of, you know, not complaints, but 
they say, if you want to work with me, you have to work on different directions. Sure. You know? Suggestions. <laughs> Suggestion. Suggestion could make me feel a little bit uncomfortable in the beginning, you know, because somebody telling you what, what you have to do in order to get starting business with somebody is, you know, sometimes you don't feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, with totally. Two suggestions. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's how I started the, the business. On the first point, you know, 50% Uber or Lyft, black, black cars, and then 50% or 30% private client and affiliators. Okay. Yes. This this guy you met, sorry, was he like a big potential affiliate that was going to give you work or was he like a private client who had a lot of No, work? it's it, that's a very important question because this, this guy was, you know, just people who have huge contracts, like let's say Four Seasons or Grand Hyatt ah, or private I aviation see. companies. And, you know, he has started to give me a lot of business, right? And when I started to do business from him, I, I was starting to learn like how the other drivers ride, drive, how the other drivers looks like, how the cars looks like, how this guy doing the, the connection between the passengers and the driver, you know? So I was learning a lot about everything you know so he was a big affiliate the- he had contracts with hotels and he worked with probably a lot of independent operators like you exactly. who probably do uber black part-time but also do you know private clients and affiliate work part of the time yeah but this guy he he owns 15 cars on, on oh, seattle wow. he owns he have the, the let's say on my my experience he have this the best contract on the city and you know he has started to let's say, teach me how to work. Pretty like much. a mentor, almost. Mentor, that's, that's the, right, the, right, the right word. Yeah, mentor me. And, you know, I, I invite him at dinner and everything. So he, nice. he, he is his big part on, on my, from, from my success here in the city. And how did you uh, meet him initially again? Because this is one of the things, two weeks ago when we were talking that you told me about, I'm like, man, this is like the key that a lot of, new uh, limo business owners, this is what they don't do. They don't find someone who's further along where they want to be to kind of show them the ropes. And so how did you meet this guy? How'd you get introduced? So Mark, last year we had a Taylor Swift concert. So okay. I, sure. I put my car on, on the P from Lumenfield, which is the, the bigger stadium on the city. And we had, we had like, like 25 cars on the same parking spot. And the guy pretty much approached me and say, hey, you look good. Do you want to make business? You know, this is my phone number. Just call me later and whatever. So I connect with him pretty much because I, I'm- It's your look guy. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so I was going to say that. So, you know, take a look at Armando. I'm underdressed over <laughs> here. So were you dressed in like suit, tie, looking sharp and clean cut? See, that's that's the thing. I mean, if Armando was in a t-shirt or whatever- the guy might have not even approached him. Also, you had a, a newer vehicle, which when you do online marketing might not be as important, but when you want to meet these bigger affiliates who you want work from, looking the part like Armando does right now, very sharp and having a, what did you, or what do you have at now? Is what, It was a Navigator, right? Uh, relatively it's still, new or? It's, it's still the Navigator 2020. You okay. Know, when I bought the car, it, it was like like one year old. So let's say okay. Was, so pretty nice. Pretty new. Yeah. yeah. But the guy pretty much connect with me as a person. He don't the the, the people those big affiliators or company they don't need a drivers. They have thousand drivers. They have yeah. to connect with with the, the person who's gonna drive. You know. Totally. Even if I have right now, let's say a, a network from six or seven drivers, he just wanna work directly with me. He don't need yeah. An, an extra chauffeur, one extra car. He he need people who he can lay down and, you know, trash. He's going to be on time. He's going to be always there, you know. And yeah. professional. And 100%. You have to be professional if you're going to get success on this business. You have That's... to be on time. You have to have your car clean, but also you have to look professional. And, you know, you, it's, it's a whole details, you know, you have to keep in mind if you want, you know, People remind what you're doing because chauffeurs, black cars, a, a lot, too many. Yeah, no, totally. And it's funny. So I did an interview a long while back where someone was discussing, yeah, it doesn't matter that much what you wear. And yeah, if he's doing affiliate work, he'll wear a suit. But the more I 
read on Facebook and the affiliate groups and whatever, and the more I listen to people like Armando, how you look is your first impression that these big, if, if they see you and you're, you know, not looking up to snuff, they're likely not going to talk to you and they're likely not going to be interested in working with you. And Armando has the look and everyone can have that look, right? It's just clean cut, wear a suit, you know, make sure your car's clean. And, you know, he didn't have a brand new right off the showroom for Lincoln Navigator, but relatively new. And I'm sure it was really clean. And, and then also just the interaction. I'm sure your interaction, you're respectful, you're professional. And that's the kind of person these big affiliates want to work with. So Yes, Mark. I, also, you know, my first language is not English. Again, sure. you know, my first language is Spanish. I'm on that transition, you know, entering on the business and everything. I have to learn a little bit more. And that's, you know, even for myself, helped me a lot to get confident doing job for this affiliator because I have to call, I have to, you know, get a meeting with him and everything. And this guy made me the confidence to say, you know, Armando, you, if you're doing a great job for him, you can do it on your side too. So definitely uh, the, the last year was pretty much very important for me. Yeah. Nice. And so at that point, you, he started giving you probably a decent amount of work. And then at what point did you decide to start marketing your own business? How did you get into that? So unfortunately, Uber and Lyft, they have very particular rules or I don't know, they are very sensitive companies with, with paperwork, with insurance, with everything. For some reason, they disactivated my account, you know, and just right, just like that. One morning after a year, they asked for my new insurance and everything. And I, you know, I upload my new insurance and they detect as a fraudulent documents or something like that. And they just close my accounts, like just like this. Oh my know? gosh. I can't imagine waking up to that. Oh no, too much <laughs> stress because it's still Uber and Lyft on that point, it, it, it wasn't, you know, like 50% of my income and I, I was without any kind of job. Right. Yeah. That's so scary. <laughs> I tried to appeal on everything. I was, I went to the lawyer or whatever. But it's super complicated to recover your account after you get deactivated, to be honest. Yeah. So people who's doing Uber, Lyft, they are a great company. You're going to make a lot of money. But you have to understand this company, you, you, that you, you don't have any client. It's yeah, yeah, client. exactly. Yep. Exactly. So I, I want it's like a big affiliate, see. right? <laughs> it's Correct. like a big affiliate who can just turn your account off at any time. It's nothing bad working for them, to be honest. Yeah. The only the only negative point right here is when they decide just to activate your account or put it on hold or whatever, you you lay you let them you know handle your, your businesses, you know, because they decide when when, when you're gonna work and when you're not gonna work with them. Yeah. And that's the part uh, on work with rideshare companies, which I, I don't like it. So oh, when right. I get this deactivated on Uber and Leaf, I decide, well, I have to understand more of the business. So I reach out, you know, a few other affiliator companies and I reach out your videos pretty yeah. much eight, eight months ago, I, I guess. Start researching started researching on to, YouTube, I'm guessing. <laughs> exactly. How how to how to to start in limousine uh, businesses. I, I Google that. How yeah. you can market in your, your, your businesses. You know, a lot of things pops pops up. And one of the things was, you know, your company, which, you know, I highly appreciate and, and I grateful with, with everything you guys doing for me and my company. And well, when I do that, I start to understand a lot of many things, which I, I, I even understand because I was focused on rideshare companies and few, few other, right? I get in on the side, but I, yeah. I don't have the, the, the whole control for the business like I'm doing now. So yeah, yeah I'm pretty much just... Google that and find you guys. And I start to watch a video for three months. Let's yeah. say that three months, you know, and try to understand my next step is going to be because, you know, marketing is not cheap, to be honest. No, but it's, it's not. It's more, it's more, uh, it's, uh, but it's more, more expensive if you're doing job for another company because you're losing more money and you're doing cheaper than if you do in marketing. That's what people have to understand. Right. That's a great point right there. And people don't think about that because they're never paying the money 
out, right? When money's leaving Correct. your pocket or your credit card, you notice that. But when you're taking a job for, let's say, 35 or 30% less than you typically would, and you're doing that over and over and over, you know, you are paying in essence, just like you're kind of paying for Uber. Uber, I've heard, takes up to like 50%. But bigger affiliates, a lot of times, will take around 30%, you know, 20 to 40%, probably. I don't know the exact number. It probably depends on the affiliate and your agreement with them. But you are essentially paying them, even though the money isn't leaving your pocket, in reduced rates, right? Correct. So you never, when you're when you doing marketing, as I understand right now, you never losing money. It's just you put it on front right yes you have to you have to invest money if you want to get return totally Sam, uh, and now i have few friends who ask me hey what are you guys doing whatever i told them is do you have to be prepared before you bought the car because it's not yeah. just the car you have to take to have money enough money to start to invest in, on marketing on everything so yeah pretty much using that way interesting and so one of the things that uh, armando and i were talking about before the call is you know, I mentioned to him one of the struggles that owner operators have when, when they start with us and why we try to focus on companies that might have two cars or if it's a team, a husband and a wife or a husband and a business partner. It's important because your ads are running pretty much all day. And if you're driving every day and a lead comes in, well, who's going to take that lead? And a lot of people say, oh, I'll just hire someone in another country. And I just find that doesn't work as well because many times they don't care as much about booking the job. You know, you care because you're getting all the revenue from that job, but they only care as much as they don't want to lose their job and be fired. But that's many times not a big enough incentive. And so Armando was telling me that he has a, a really good way kind of around that. So yeah, what what do you do when it when it comes to that, Armando? So now I, I get like 20 leads a, a, every single day, new leads. So if I'm, I own an operator. So even if I have chauffeurs or whatever, I still take care of some of the rights. So I have chat, to, I use chat to PD to, to text back and forth, you know, more professionally. And That's everything. brilliant. You know, because <laughs> I can text, I can text in Spanish, you know, hi, this is Armando, whatever, blah, blah, blah. You know, give, give ex exactly like, very quick respond and professionally yeah. and perfect and, <laughs> yeah. and perfect even if i'm driving and i have to to say something quick or longer or whatever like you can press just a, a video what's the name it's not video like you press a button and, and they they record and it your records voice. your voice and yeah it's and exactly then exactly it... why you need it and you and the very end you can say translate it on english Pretty much. I've and never heard anyone clicking. say that <laughs> that is such a okay so are you using like the chat gpt app or do you have it in the browser and you're just doing text to speech? I, I use it on the ChatGPT app. You know, it's pretty much you, you can you have to say in the very end, just translate it to Spanish or translate it to English. Yeah, yeah. They they're gonna do that for you. <laughs> that's just that's so freaking brilliant. So I that, love that. that when, when you ask me how I respond my leads when I'm driving, obviously now now then I understand. I just have April Trumpers short trips for 35 minutes, you know. If something pops up on these 35 minutes, just right in the moment I drop off my passengers, I take my phone for 10 minutes and, you know, text him back, send the quote. And then if I have to do something else, I just take care of that. Just don't take, I don't take in long trips for now because I yeah. have to spend time doing mark, take care of my marketing and my business. Yes. And handling so, the sales, right? That's the yes. most valuable thing you can do. So now I don't take in more for, for rides myself every, every single day. So for rides, you know, my schedule, no more of that because I have to spend time on sales. Yeah, no, 100%. And so, and just a quick note for you guys watching this, I'm sure maybe some days, and I don't know if you're getting leads from other places, but I don't think you're getting 20 leads a day from us. I wish you were. And maybe some days you get quite a few. I don't know if it's quite 20. So I just want to make a quick note, a quick note there, just because I'll find some people watch these videos and be like, whoa, 20 leads a day. That's crazy. And I, I wish, you know, my clients all got 20 leads a day and some do with very large budgets, but so that's just a quick note, but we were talking two weeks ago. You told me about a client you got, what, what exactly happened? Because Armando, you probably know that a lot of the leads, if it's a one-off thing, 
or you just, you know, you land a client's round trip, they're flying into Seattle, they're never, you know, they don't go to Seattle very often. You can get clients that live there that use you again, but the real money is made when you land a client who's going to use you again, or you land a really big job. And so not every lead's going to be that, you know, it's not always going to be a billionaire flying in on his private jet, right? But who was, or, or you told me a story a few weeks ago about, about a pretty big job you got. So, so that came through from the ads, right? Yes, that's, that's the thing. So when I watched your video last year, I understand I have to open my business Google profile. Right. So yes, I work, that's I huge. work a lot on my Google business profile to get connect with my landing page, to get connect with yep. my Instagram, with your ads, whole, everything has to be together. Right. Yeah. So some, somebody just Google my name or, you know, transfers on Seattle or whatever. And I have the luck. Well, let's say luck. I have like, I was blessed. Like was one of the people who I needed. So that client, it was somebody from India, right? Yeah. So this client from India, he need he called me to my Google, my what's the name? He called me to my Google profile, the, right? Yeah, yeah. With this, sure. with this is with this the same phone number I use him for for Google Ads, right? Yeah, yeah. He called me. He called me. He say he have a client who need three SUVs for four days on the city of Seattle. So on that point, I say, well, this is a span. What's going on? I have to investigate it. What's this company come from? And you made my, my, my research and definitely was somebody from India. And yeah. I sent him a quote and everything. I don't have the whole information. What's going to be the passengers. I just need to have four SUV and, and six body wire for this person, this passenger. So was that the biggest was, quote you had ever done up until I, that point? What's the bigger done? I never. Wow. Done. I bet you're nervous when you got that. You're like, uh, it, it was, I want to do this was. right. Did, was, did the guy was, help so. you? How'd you know even how to quote that? Like, well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm learn a little bit about the business. It takes a few months and I have the right team to work pretty much together. And yeah. I have, I have the, the vehicle available for me. And also they request the Mercedes S class 2024. And I call my friend back, which is the same person who's mentored me on the city. Yeah. And he say, well, my car is available for you. My fleet's available for you if you need it. So I called the person. It was good ticket, like $35,000, yeah. $40,000. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is so wild. So I what was a huge very job. Scary. I was very scary because even it's not just about the money. It's because... You know, if something goes wrong, my company is going to be in the metal. Oh, right? no, totally. So you, you, yeah. You have to be professional. You have to take care of all the details, you know, to get the contract. So, yes, definitely. I mean, this person was the minister from India who's come to wow. Seattle to get a, a 20 minutes meeting with Bill Gates. And, you know, <laughs> they, so request, they request four SUVs for four days and they request two SUVs with six body wires and I have to take care of the entire ticket and, you know, take pay from which, which is great. You know, this company yeah. usually pay like some percent on the very end. And then on the, when you finish the job, they pay the rest. Right. But take yeah. this company, just give me a credit card. I charge it on the credit card, the entire amount. And I call my bank. I secure the money in my bank. It was, everything's okay. So I provide the service, which was, they, they booked me for four days and they just used my server for, let's say, two hour and a half. I picked them up on private airport. I provide my, my six car with the, with, the, with the security and I bring them to, to Microsoft, one of the big buildings from Microsoft. We yeah. were right there for 20 or 30 minutes and then they back to the private airport. So they booked for wow. four days, but I, they use our servers for two hour and a half. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's so crazy that's, that's made me understand is the whole part of the business different than just april transfers you know it's part of the business when you find the right people or, or you connect with the right person you're gonna find two contracts who'd make you life easier you know oh, you, don't have yeah. to, you don't have to worry to take care of you know 20 or 30 or 40 april transfer very week every week because two contracts is gonna keep you company alive and i understand now when you connect with these um, companies and when you have 
contract or whatever help you and give you relief because you don't have to make sales every single day. Yeah, because yeah. You have this company who always feeding your 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 company with with transfers. And so that is a great point that I just want to highlight because I find oftentimes operators new to online marketing they think the online marketing is going to just fill my schedule and that's all I'm going to need. No, that's not that's not it at all. You want that to be a percentage of your business. You want to have affiliate work, especially in the beginning. You want to have your own private clients, which I'm sure you have plenty of your own private clients. And then if you can get some contracts and over time, when you meet enough people, you eventually get them. Those are the different ways you can really start getting business. And Armando, I guarantee you the reason he got that job was because his online reputation is stellar. If you look at his reviews, all five-star reviews. And that's what people are searching for, especially someone like this gentleman who is contracting for this massive job. People like that, they don't care as much about the price. They actually don't really care about the price at all. They want to make sure that whoever they're contracting with is a reputable company that takes care of their customers. And that's why online reputation, if there's anything any of you watching this can do, make sure you have that Google business profile set up. Make sure you do everything you can to really over deliver, especially for your initial clients. You should always over deliver, but especially for your initial several hundred clients, because you want all five-star reviews and you want real reviews, because if you read reviews enough, you can tell the ones that maybe they're not fake, but they just don't sound, oh, great car, great driver. Everything was great. It's like, all right, but no, what if they tell a specific story? Hey, Armando picked us up. We were going on a cruise. He took care of us. You know, that's that, those are the kind of reviews you want. So man, I bet that was a massive confidence boost when you landed that job and it's your biggest quote today and you actually landed it. And the, 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 the most important thing for me and my company, even you know, the, the ticket was great. I don't want to, you know, but I sharing that ticket with big companies or my affiliated companies and just companies now is seeing me as, you know, this guy, you know, he's doing well, he's growing and we, we're going to, you know, go back and forward together. And, you know, they give me their entire fleet, which, you know, it's 12 cars, you know, millions of dollars right there. On yeah, that business. totally. And make me, make me now, you know, if I need something from them, just give them a call and they're going to be there. Just, you know, because it's, we're doing business back and forward right now. So, okay. And that's actually probably the biggest thing to take from all of this. It's the, le so right now, Armando in their eyes, he's, he's one of them. He's a player now because if all you do is take work from other affiliates, that's fine, but they're not going to give you the same terms someone like Armando will now get because he brings a client like that. They're like, whoa, they almost look at you as equals now because really exactly. it's all about what kind of clients can you bring in and bringing in that, that amount of work for a potential affiliate. Now you become super valuable to them. And let's say everyone needs vehicles at the same time, let's say it's a Taylor Swift concert, everyone's sold out. They're going to let Armando have those vehicles first, very likely because of the relationship he has. And, you know, and I'm sure this guy just loves helping you now because he's seen you go from, you know, where you were still doing Uber black and now Correct. look at you, you've grown tremendously in just what the past year or so when you started. Exactly one year. Wow, that's so so Mark, you know, wow. now this this guy, he after you know, after we, we build our relationship or connection, he gave me two of his driver, let's say two of his driver, two of his car, just 24 hours. I can call them anytime that they have, you know, GCon 2023, you know, they are great chauffeurs. They they have tremendous great look, they're handsome guys. Unfortunately yeah. for my standards, I have to work with people like that, you know? Sure. On my, on my, on my, my city, I don't have that many drivers, you know? It's hard to, to find two, two drivers. And this company open with, you know, they give me two, you know, just take two driver for you. If you need it, call them 24 hours for you. And that's make my company growing a little bit more 
before totally. I make any other investment on new vehicle. Because right now I just have one car, but I have a network for seven, right? Yeah. So I, I, I can take care of any business right now, even a splinter minivans, motor coach, whatever, because this company supporting me with their, their fleet, which is yeah. great, which is very hard, you know, take me a lot of time, you know, take the, 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 the respect on the business, to be honest. Totally. And so that's another great, great point is it's a lot less risky because if he went and bought, because I see a lot of operators in the industry, they take it as a point of pride, the more vehicles they own. But look, at the end of the day, during certain months, it's going to be slow. And you're going to feel tremendous pressure if you have all these vehicles, all these drivers, because you have a much higher overhead at that point, right? And you have to make that overhead every single month. Right now, Armando, he's playing it safe. And I'm sure you will at some point, probably if you need to add an additional vehicle, but only when you're sure that you can keep that vehicle busy. Because right now, if you've got all these assets with great vehicles, good, good chauffeurs, you don't need to take on all that extra expense and risk, right? You can run it lean like you are now and still make quite a bit more in doing so. Yeah, but the, the most important thing you have to have on your side is the clientele. You know, yeah. if you have the clientele, you can you can manage either the, you know, you can farm out the, the, the trips or you can, you know, buy a second car, but what kind of car you have to buy, you know, you don't have to buy hundred K vehicle because your client want to build connection with you, not with the, the, the car you do drive in, let's say. Yeah. So that's on huge. that point, you don't have to buy 2024, let's say Lincoln Navigator or uh, Escalade, which is cost 120 K you can buy, let's say a Mercedes S class, which is cost $35,000. You can pay off in cash, you know, and you, you just that vehicle for a special client. You don't have to invest million dollars in the business when you're just starting, right? Yeah. Now, when you jump to, to and you have to make work for, for companies as, I don't know, Black Lane or Uber Black, they request, like, your car have to be three or four years old if you want to work with, with those companies. So when you're doing on your way, and when you have your clientele, you can manage to, you know, choose details. You can buy a, a Lexus, which is high reliable car, sedan, yep. or you, you can buy just a regular Suburban. You don't have to buy the brand new Lincoln Navigator for two trips. So yes, definitely what, what I'm learning now is you don't, you have to see how your business move with your clientele. You don't have yes. to work because, Great because point. you know. You don't, you don't have to buy a car or you don't have to, it's, it's, it's very complicated. You, you have to, to work with your clientele, not with something else. That's such a great point. So kind of feeling out what sort of leads are coming in, what sort of people, what are they look like? What's more, most important to them? Because what you'll probably find is, yeah, for these bigger affiliates, some of their clients want a certain make and model or certain year or a newer vehicle. But for many times when you're doing online marketing, some of those clients, they might care more about the price. And so you can have an assortment and maybe it makes sense that the next vehicle is a Suburban or something, something that isn't a $120,000 vehicle because it doesn't matter as much. And that's why, like you said, Armando, focus on your clients. What are they looking for? What's important to them? And let that drive the decision you make on the next vehicle you purchase, right? But the most important thing, Mark, is following the standards. You know, even if you have 20, 20, 20 2018, 2016, 2015 vehicle, you have to follow the standard. You have to have the vehicle clean. You have to look great. You have to give them a great experience, customer service, because you, ha you, you cannot, you know, you have to do that if you want. Yeah. You know, to those clientele give you a good reviews on everything because they don't want to ask you, hey, your car is 2020 or it's 2024, it's brand new, whatever. They want to look at this, the service is great. If you be on time, if you looks good, if you text them back and forward when they arrive at the airport, yeah. that's what they look what I'm looking for. Yeah, it's Definitely. funny. I just I just spent all this time talking about vehicles, but you're completely right. What matters more than any of that, responsiveness, friendliness, being like professional 
you know, clean. That's really what makes an impression. And many times if if you aren't those things, you won't even get a client in the first place, right? But that that's important for new operators. That yeah. I want to put this on two different categories. When you are new operators, you have to see what your clientele looking for. But when you jump to the next step, you have to have brand new cars. You have to have yeah, yeah. a standard with brand new cars. I'm just saying on my position right now, as a new operator, as I have my brand, brand new car, and my 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 connections and network. I ask for you know your car have to be brand new or whatever. But you know you can start to move and see you know if you want to invest on the second or third car or whatever. If you have a lot of clients who's just going to airport transfers, you don't have to invest you know hundred k car vehicle. Great point. Okay. Yeah. So, so really, it's, it's deep, different steps. You know, first step. Yeah. You know, you have to to build your clientele. You have to follow you know the standard for your clientele. And the second one, you have to buy obviously brand new cars, and you feel it have to look, you know, like 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 new. If you want to get a high value tickets, to be, yeah, yeah, to be and, and like the big the biggest clients and and affiliate work as well with the bigger companies, they're looking for those sorts of things, right? Yeah. So this business have too too much, you know, too many different like up and downs because. When you're starting, you you know you you say, well, I have to buy a brand new car or whatever, which is is the re is real. If you if you want, you know, all the companies looking at you, you have to look great, whatever, and also have a brand new car. But when you're starting to move on, on the way, you you have your own clientele. You can move and make the transition with two clientele. That's what that's that's on my opinion. Totally, yeah. There's there's essentially the two levels, right? There's the 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 clients which you know, with online advertising, a lot of them are price sensitive and price is their focus. But the other type is they're not as concerned with the price and they're just looking for a higher level even. And so kind of figuring out what your clients are looking for, but keeping the standard right in the very beginning, friendly, responsive, on time, you know, just checking all those boxes to really start growing, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's that, that's the the main because I I I'm hundred percent. If if big companies is watching this video, they're gonna say, well, Armando, he he want to stay all with, with old vehicle, or whatever. But no, you you can you can you you know you can define your business on different categories, and you have to yeah you have to to sedans or cheaper SUVs for for you know for people who travel with the cruise lines. They don't care about things, you know. Yeah. And then you have to get you know your Mercedes S class, your Lincoln Navigator, and Escalade for for high clientele. Yeah. Definitely. So yeah. Learning who your clients are at the end of the day, because like if it's an end client where it's someone booking with you, they're going on a cruise, that's like an end client. Or if it's an affiliate, because that's a client too, right? A Correct. big affiliate, that's a client too. And what are they looking for? So trying to figure out, okay, what business do I want more of? If you're only going to try to do online marketing, which I always suggest doing both online marketing and affiliate work. Uh, but if you're only doing online marketing, you might be able to get away with, you know, suburban, right? That's maybe one or two years old or whatever, or even three or four years old. I've had clients on here that have said, hey, Mark, where, where I'm at in, let's say, Kansas City or whatever, a lot of my clients are not, you know, that concerned. I'm not doing a lot of affiliate work. I've got a suburban that's four or five years old. It's clean. I always wear a suit you know, but, and, and sometimes that works, right? So really listening to your clients and what they're looking for is kind of what I'm getting here or getting Correct. from you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's the point. Mm -hmm. Nice. Definitely. So what's your plan? What's your plan now, Armando? Just keep growing from here. Just kind of see where the business takes you or, or what are you so, thinking? So Mark, I'm very excited. What, what, what is, you know, I'm doing right now with marketing company like, like yours and I'm yeah. trying to make put my my company for now, like everybody looking on, on social media, and you know I have on my social media real picture. That's very important. When you build something, either you know a website or Instagram, something use your real picture. Yeah, in my opinion, that's that's why I think about it. you. I don't like when I'm going to Google, you know, put some company or whatever, but pictures is not. It's real. all stock not photos. Not yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like that. So you can put just you simple landing page but use real picture of, of you and your vehicle. I agree try to try to pay two or three hundred dollars take a, a professional picture yourself to agree on, on the profile and everything because that's gonna make 
you know, you got to connect with passengers on your clients more, you know, more strong. A lot better. Sure. A because better. they can tell yeah. if it's a stock photo, right? And of if course. they're going to a bunch of different, you know, websites or whatever, landing pages or Instagram, like they, they can tell. And so, yes, I think it's totally worth it. Invest in getting some quality pictures taken of your vehicles, of yourself, maybe yourself next to your vehicle, because that that does work. And it's like an asset that you just can use over and over again for months and for years. And you only have to pay for it once, right? Get Hire a photographer right. for an hour or two to come in and take some shots. It's totally worth it. So for now, I'm, I'm going to still um, take a look for this coming summer, how, how the, the business is going for me. I have my good network, but also I, I want, you know, growing, but I, I believe on my market, it's going to be better jump to uh, splinters, minivans, motor coach, because I want to start to sell bigger tickets for sure. Nice. Awesome, man. Well, Hey, it's been great having you as a client with a little marketer. How long have you been a client since December? Was it? Or since, since December, since December, wow. but you guys changed my, my entire game for, to be honest. And it's only been like <laughs> four and a half or so months, but Armando's doing everything right. Just find a mentor, right? Try to get some affiliate work and then keep that standard. Find out what your clients want and don't forget what bit you know. You're not an Uber driver. Get a get a decent looking suit. Make sure your vehicle's clean and, and you might just be growing as quickly as Armando is because it's really insane to watch how well you've done, you know, since you since you started. And just it's only been a year, right? I can't yeah. imagine in, in another year or two, we should do another one of these and kind of see where you're at. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm I'm happy to share in some of my information and you know, just we can we can, you know, take a look together um or, or accounts later because I'm pretty sure and I confident what I'm doing to this market for sure. Totally. All right. Thanks so much, Armando, for doing this. Thank you, Marco. Have a All good right. one. Bye.